Today's video sponsor is MSI and their award-winning B550 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi motherboard, the ultimate companion for the latest AMD Ryzen processors. It comes equipped with Wi-Fi 6, lightning fast PCIe Gen 4, 2.5 gigabits per second networking and outstanding VRM performance. This really is a board that does it all. When paired with the 8 core 16 thread AMD Ryzen 7 3700X processor, you've got yourself a formidable system for gaming, content creation and productivity. So no matter the task, MSI's B550 motherboards along with AMD's Ryzen processors have you covered. Enjoy more cores and more performance today via the links in the video description. Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. We're here with part two of the September Q&A. We've just filmed part one, so that's probably on the channel uh, yesterday. So if you missed it, go back, watch that. But still plenty of interesting questions to get through in this part. So what do you reckon? Just get getting back into answering questions, all that fun stuff? Yeah, I think we just get straight into it. No messing around this time, Tim. Yep, Serious mode. Straight mom. in. All right, let's go. The Radeon will come with GDDR6, so we're talking about the next-gen cards we're expecting yep. soonish. Can they compete with G6X, so GDDR6X? So basically the stuff that's on it, the Ampere cards, the higher-end ones anyway. How much does it count for the 3080 huge performance boost? Um, well, it, the memory throughput uh, coupled with the bus width really gives you how much bandwidth the card has, uh, along with a few other things to do with the core. But we haven't, well, we haven't seen how the 3080 performs when you lower the memory clocks, but there's really no point because the way Radeon and GeForce GPUs handle and manage their memory and things like compression, that vary anyway. So it's, yeah, basically they will have paired their architecture to work with the GDDR6 memory. So there's a chance that if you overclock the memory on that card, you're not going to necessarily see a performance uplift without also overclocking the cores. Basically, I guess what I should just lead by saying, you can't really compare Radeon and GeForce GPUs side by side on a spec sheet. You can really yeah. only compare Radeon GPUs with Radeon GPUs, especially from the same architecture. But they're, most, they're, they're meant to compete well. So we very much have our fingers crossed yeah. that that is the case. I mean, we've seen the reverse of this in the past with AMD using, say, HBM, for example, and then NVIDIA sticking with GDDR memory. And, you know, again, it's all about, as you're saying, the architecture and how it's designed and how it makes use of that memory. NVIDIA cards at that time were still the faster cards, even though they were using the supposedly inferior memory tech. So it really does come down to all sorts of things, you know, if they really needed more bandwidth, but they were stuck using GDDR6, then they can increase the bus width as one example of a way to get more bandwidth. But that's mm -hmm. obviously expensive and complex. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't think you can just sort of look at a next-gen Radeon card and say, oh, it's using GDDR6, it's automatically going to be, you know, hampered in terms of performance. Um, yeah, we're just really going to have to wait and see how that one plays out. All right, next question. What do you think it will take for AMD to gain momentum in the GPU market like they have with Zen in the CPU market? Is slightly cheaper than NVIDIA for similar performance good enough, or do they need to do laps around NVIDIA in terms of value for consumers to take notice? Yeah, what do you reckon? Well, I think they found a, well, they saw a lot of success with the 5700 series. I think that did a lot better than maybe they were expecting. And then things cooled off massively with the 56 and 5500 XT because they weren't nearly as compelling. So I think really all they have to do is continue doing 5700 like series releases. Yep. Hopefully more across the board. And that would certainly apply a lot of pressure to NVIDIA. But as we've seen with Zen, it has to happen many, many generations over. Um, they've obviously got, uh, an architectural design advantage over Intel that lets them scale up much better with the chiplet design. They don't, at least at this point in time, have that advantage for the GPUs, uh, possibly something they can look at doing in the future. But it's really a, they need to hit it out of the ballpark. If they do it, say this time, they won't get nearly as much traction as you expect them to. They'll do well with the enthusiasts, the, the type of people that watch Harbor Unboxed and Gamers Nexus and all those channels. Uh, they'll see good sales from those guys, but from the mainstream, the masses, the OEMs, all that stuff, it'll still be largely dominated by NVIDIA. So they just have to keep doing that over and over again, which is a big ask. It's what's put NVIDIA in a very fortunate position where they can just transition to a single architecture and improve margins rather than performance. So that, that's pretty much what's got to happen there. Uh, so it's a big ask, but in the, in the short term, 
if they can release something really competitive this time around, it's at least beneficial for us and the guys that really pay attention to the hardware releases and it doesn't, they're not on the big slow moving boat where it takes them ages to realize what's going on, uh, which is what we're sort of seeing with Zen on the mobile market. So yeah, that's, that's that one. Next question. Are you guys in hardware unboxed in favor of the high power draw of the RTX 3000 lineups if it meant getting maximum performance or would you prefer getting lower GPU performance but much less power usage? So personally, I'm interested to hear your thoughts. Personally, I'm all for the high power draw and maximum performance side of things. So long as, you know, it's it's cooled appropriately, doesn't run super loud, the you know, you're not talking about putting a giant brick into your system that uses like five slots. All that stuff would be unacceptable. But if we're getting, if it's a decent card design, it's got high power draw, but gives you really good performance, then I don't really see what the issue is with that. I'd certainly prefer that over just lower performance and less power. Well, I think I know what he's getting at. The question doesn't make too much sense because you're really just talking about the same efficiency. So yep. it's like... You, you can make Ampere a slower GPU with less power usage. You just make it a slower GPU and it will use less power. Yeah. But I think I think more what he's getting at, would you prefer that the, the focus is more on efficiency um, and maybe dialing in those GPUs at the peak of the efficiency curve? Um, so obviously we're all for maximum efficiency, but if it means going outside of the efficiency window and there's still some performance there to be had... Um, generally that's something overclockers would go after anyway and i think maybe in this instance they've pushed maybe a bit too close to that edge possibly Um, yeah that that that, that's what it's looking like um there's virtually no oc headroom on the factory oc models as you're talking like one or two percent you can squeeze out of it before it becomes unstable uh through sort of uh in-depth or exhaustive stress tests um but i don't really have too much of a problem with the RTX 3000 series, like it's offering a really good jump up in performance over previous generations. Really, it's the price to performance that we focus on rather than the uh, power to performance or, you know, uh, yeah, basically that metric. So, yeah, we're all in favor of more performance if it means bigger, fatter GPUs that, that suck down more power. All right, next question is, with the release of the RTX 30 series and the upcoming console launches, HDMI 2.1 gets a big push. Uh, Some manufacturers already announced new HDMI 2.1 monitors, but mostly the next big things are announced announced around New Year's and CES. My question would be, do you think manufacturers like LG will release revision 2.0 versions of current top monitors like the 34G and 850 with HDMI 2.1, or will we see a widespread implementation around, say, 2022 at minimum? Um, based on what we've seen in the past with sort of new connector standards coming out, I don't think we would see revisions because we've seen with stuff like, say, 4K 144Hz monitors, one of the revisions that could have been possible was including display stream compression. And we've seen with some monitors that they just kind of left it and instead released a whole new monitor that used that technology rather than going down the sort of revision path. So I think we will see next-gen monitors use HDMI 2.1 at some point. But... Again, you know, a lot of monitors are designed more for the PC audience where display port is already sufficient in a lot of situations. It really depends, you know, what the licensing cost for HDMI 2.1 is versus how many people they expect to use that monitor with a console or something like that. I would expect adoption to eventually get there, but yeah, it could take a little while. I don't think we'll see revisions. It would just be, you know, the next version of that monitor with all sorts of new features. One of them would be HDMI 2.1. All right, next one here is a nice, short, sweet, to the point one. Would you say that the 3080 is more of a 1440p high FPS card? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that. I'd say that the vast majority of people who are looking at buying it are interested in 1440p uh, high refresh rate. I think that's fair to say based on the polled information we have. At least that's true of our viewers. Uh, but I would say NVIDIA would like to position it more as a 4K gaming product, given that that's where yep. it scales best and delivers the best gains over the competition. Uh, yeah, that that's pretty much that, really. But it, it's a very good 1440p product. It's a shame it doesn't scale at 1440p as well as it does at 4K. But, you know, 50% yeah. performance uplift on average over a 2080. No yeah, complaints from good. us. Yep, I'll take it. Do you think... AMD will have an advantage this time when AMD uses TSMC's process. Well, that's not new for AMD. 
Mm. Uh, but an advantage relative to Amp here, which is on Samsung's 8mm yeah. tech. They'll definitely have an advantage, there's no doubt about it. Uh, but AMD have had process node advantages uh, more than once, and it hasn't really given them an, any kind of advantage, really, at least one that is measurable and means anything. Yeah. But I think this time around, it could be very different. It's kind of like the memory thing we were talking about with GDDR6, for example. It's like it's not a given that no. using a better node means that the card is better. It really does depend on the architecture and how they're harnessing it. It does seem like you know TSMC 7 nanometer is a better node than mm -hmm. Samsung 8 nanometer with just the sort of efficiency gains we've seen going from NVIDIA's one generation to the next generation. But again, AMD is going to have to significantly improve their architecture because they're already on 7 nanometer with like a... Ryan Navi, 7, the current gen yeah. stuff, and that is inferior to AM to sorry Nvidia using eight nanometer or even twelve nanometers. So, lots to play out in that space. Mm. Well, it was competitive, but again, yeah. it comes down to pricing and other things as well. Yeah. All right. Next question: How much longer do you think we'll have to wait to get a GPU with fifty percent more performance than the GTX ten eighty Ti at the three hundred dollar price point? So, if we're talking fifty percent more than a ten eighty Ti, we're talking what, like just below an RTX 3080 sort of performance? At 1440p, that, yeah. In that at range? At 1440p. Yeah. Um, so, so we're talking half the price we're currently at now. Well, what, for that to happen anytime soon, like let's say for next generation, for that to happen next generation, which seems unlikely, but for yeah. it to happen next generation, AMD would have to really give NVIDIA a walloping this generation. And then yeah. RDNA yeah. 3 would have to be very cost effective. Uh, yeah, I mean, you'd need a card sort of this generation that would bring that performance down to like $500, and then you'd have to really hope that the next gen brings it down to $300. Yeah. That's, not, that's not even a given. So if we're talking about like an RTX 3080-like card this generation being $200 cheaper, yeah, again, it's not not necessarily going to be a thing for the next gen. So maybe three generations? I was going to say two at the absolute best yeah. if all things go like yeah. a perfect sort of storm. Uh, let's say but yeah three seems pretty reasonable yep uh, but it's hard to say because we just haven't had competition at those higher points for a while now yeah i mean we haven't so, even got gtx 1080 ti performance at 300 dollars. so no. to then want 50 percent more you're looking at yeah quite some time uh steve would you still recommend an rx 5600 xt slash 1660 super uh, price range card or should we wait for the 3060 or maybe the, the 3050 yeah, building a computer right now is a weird one. I was talking to a mate who has quite a bit of money together at the moment and he's desperate to get a new computer because he's just, uh, well, for a bit of context, we've been in lockdown here in Victoria where we are. Uh, so Victoria, Australia, been in lockdown for quite a while. It's been a rough year here as it has been for most yep. of the world. So people have been stuck at home. They want a game. And one of my mates has been gaming on a pretty old crappy system. And, you know, he's thinking, I'm gaming so much now. And I've got this money. I want to buy a new computer. And I've said to him, I know how desperate you are. This was like a week ago we're talking about this. I know how desperate you are for a computer. But really, in a lot of ways, right now is the absolute worst time you can yep. build a computer. And he was looking at something like RTX 3080, which you can't even buy here in Australia, which is, again, true for most of the world. And he was looking at like the sort of slightly discounted uh, GeForce 20 series stuff. And I think it was only like a couple of hundred dollars less for an RTX yeah, 2080. Yeah. And I'm like, you just can't buy that. It has to be half that price to even consider it. So you can't buy a GeForce 20 series product, period. You just can't do it. Um, as for stuff like the mid-range stuff, like the 5600 XT, the 1660 Super... They technically make sense right now. Like you could still buy one. It's not terrible value, but we're just, you know, months away from 30, 3060s, Navi-based stuff, though the stuff around that price range might be a few months after that. You're best off waiting at this point if you can. You really are. Uh, it's, it's a terrible time to buy. Also, yeah. we have Zen 3. Like buying a Zen 2 CPU right now might be a bad choice as well. I mean, they're a lot less... They're a lot... Uh, more affordable compared to something like an RTX 3080. But yeah, I think especially it's by tough. early next year, you'll be looking at Zen 3, Navi, entry-level G4 stuff that may be even more competitively priced than that would be without Navi competing. So 
Just a really bad time to buy right now, buy and build, unless you're doing like a quick sort of upgrade or something and you can get yourself your hands on yeah. a 3080. But he was talking about building a whole new computer. I just think with Zen 3 on the way, uh, now's not a good time to do that. No, it's really not. I mean, I was talking recently in my like used GPU build that even like mm. even used cards are like terrible, yeah, not good value to buy. Like you, you should be selling your card if anything. Um, just just the pricing, like cards just, being priced used above what we're expecting, like new next gen cards to cost, and it's just it's just bad. I mean, the the only way I could recommend like a fifty six hundred XT or something like that is if you needed it immediately. Like, you must have it right now for whatever reason. You cannot wait because we're probably not going to be seeing, like, a 3060 immediately. It could even be, no. like, early next year that those cards come um, out. Yeah, I'd say so. But, yeah, I mean, if you can't, like we've just been talking about, if you can wait, really, you should be at this point. And a lot of people are sort of saying, why is this? Because we haven't seen this historically with, like, used part prices going through the roof after a major announcement like this, normally it goes the other way which would make sense and the reason is it's 2020 like yeah the whole covid thing so again and my mate who's thinking of spending like four thousand aussie dollars on a computer he's not really a pc gamer he's normally outside doing things at work and all that but a lot of people are stuck at home more than they'd like to be and yep pc gaming is one of the best things you can do to, to burn the time when you're stuck at home uh, yeah, exactly. A lot, of, a lot of people can't just stare at a TV anymore. That's not really a thing you do in 2020. So it's PC gaming. And so you have tons of people stuck at home. You have constrained sort of supply, logistic problems and all that sort of stuff. So it's harder to get manufacturing's delayed, getting parts out to people's delayed, and demand is just massively increased. So that's what's caused this problem. And that's why it's a, a buyer's, a seller's market rather, yep. rather than a buyer's market. So, yeah, here we'll move on to the next one. Which is pretty similar. This next question is actually pretty oh, is similar. Yeah, it's um, with the 3060 and Navi 22 looking more evident, should we expect a price drop on older cards such as the 5700 XT, 5700 RTX 2070, etc.? If these older cards do get a price drop, would they present more value than the new generation of cards? And like you've just been saying, it's kind of a situation where they need to drop in price significantly, like much more well, significantly than they are currently dropping It also at. comes back around, I just said, typically 2019 and prior normal times, you would expect that those cards to just plummet in value. Yeah. For obvious reasons, because you're getting faster cards at the same price. So that hurts the value of those cards overnight, the second they're announced or the second they hit shelves. That may not be the case here if we see uh, an RTX 3080 supply issue repeat, which I don't think we will with those mid-range cards. I think NVIDIA's learnt something and AMD have already vowed not to have that problem. So we may see a more typical scenario with those more mid-range cards where they do plummet in price and you can snap yourself up a... A cheap deal on the second-hand market but if we do run into supply issues for whatever reason then maybe that won't be the case and we'll see what more more what we just saw with the rtx 3080 yeah and for new versions of these these cards it really depends what the company wants to do with those products like you might see with amd for example that they continue to sell those products just at a cheaper price like an rx 580 mm -hmm. or something which used to be more their mid-range offering gets below $200 quite quickly and remains there on the market as that entry-level option. Whereas NVIDIA tends to do just a straight, it's on the market, now it's not on the market anymore. So instead of yeah. discounting new cards, they just stop selling them altogether. And as soon as the retailers run out of their stock, maybe they have to discount it a bit to move the rest of the stock, then they're just not available anymore. So Yeah, we, we see that yeah. from AMD, though, usually when they're transitioning to an entirely different node. So yeah, I'm not sure right. we'll see that this time. Yeah, I'm I mean, not sure. who knows? I would expect the RX 5A to finally be phased out this generation with um, something new, but yeah, we'll see. Yeah, you'd hope so. Are you excited for Intel's 11th Gen Core series? I guess this is probably a desktop question as well. Yeah, I'll uh, cover the mobile stuff. We'll ask you about the desktop after I go through the mobile things. So I think, yep. who knows when we'll get 11th Gen desktop, but... 11th gen mobiles just around the corner with Tiger Lake. And yeah, I, I am excited. I think based on some of the early benchmarking of you know the reference design, uh, it looks like it performs pretty well. So I was expecting it to be quite competitive based on the architecture announcements, the frequency improvements, um, the GPU improvements. So I think it'll be a very competitive mobile market. 
I'm not quite sure which way will end up being better, whether that's AMD or Intel in the end. But yeah, it's exciting just from the point that there's going to be competition. It's not going to be because we've kind of gone from Intel dominating to there being a brief period where Intel's products were really bad compared to AMD's. And then now we're going to get probably pretty close competition between those parts, at least in the mobile mm. side. So that's what you want. To me, that's really exciting. Um, we didn't get sampled the reference design. Maybe that's because we kind of trashed AM, uh, Intel's launch event. I probably wouldn't have been too keen on testing the reference design anyway, just because it's not like a final retail laptop. Who knows what they were doing with the configuration there? Always prefer to test final retail stuff. But once the retail models start coming in, I'll be all over it and we'll, we'll give you some opinions and performance data. Now, we'll ask you, Steve, are you excited for 11th gen desktop? Well, I'm always excited for new hardware. It depends. I guess ask me after they've made at least the first announcement on what we're getting. Uh, at this point, it's, yeah, not something that's on my radar, really. We're, we're more focused on getting through Zen 3, and then we'll worry about Intel. But I'm always excited for new hardware, as long as it's not some kind of refresh or anything. So we'll, we'll see what we get there. Yeah, um, I think it would depend. Like, obviously, the mobile stuff's exciting because it's Tiger Lake. Like, it's new. They've got the new 10 nanometer Super Fin or 10 nanometer Plus Plus Plus, or whatever you want to call it. New, you know, updated sort of minor refreshes to the core design. Whereas on desktop, we're still stuck on the Skylake design. So I think whether 11th gen is exciting is really going to come down to, is it another Skylake or is it? are they doing something different there? Who knows? Yes, yeah. we'll, we'll have to wait and see, basically. Um, PCI Express 4.0 might be the newest and most exciting thing we get there. I don't know. We'll, we'll wait yeah. and see. Next question is, do you think Navi will be able to use RTX, like, say, NVIDIA Physics and Hairworks, or will they just develop something in-house and the game studios will have something else to try to implement into the games? So I think, yeah, it's about whether we'll see the RTX ray tracing available for AMD GPUs like you would see with Hairworks, for example, where you can use it on AMD GPUs, you might not get the best performance, but at least the option is available. And personally, I'm not sure on the answer to this question. I would say that Games that have implemented the sort of Microsoft DirectX ray tracing stuff, like say your Battlefield 5, which doesn't label it as RTX, it's you know just called ray tracing, it's just called DXR. I think Fortnite's pretty similar, isn't it? Like it's just called the ray, it's, just, it's not called RTX in the game, it's just ray tracing. Uh... Yeah, games that go more down the Microsoft open path, will I would expect those to work when mm -hmm. AMD's uh, ray tracing implementation comes out. But if they've used more of the... NVIDIA RTX SDKs as opposed to just the baseline DirectX implementation, then perhaps they won't work or perhaps they won't work very well. It's really hard to say because NVIDIA has kind of dominated that space for the last you know, two years now. Um, even though there's not a lot of games, it's going to be yeah interesting to see whether it just is open day one, whether they need updates. Yeah, a lot to play out. I would think that most m modern releases like from the last little bit that have known AMD is coming out with ray tracing would be trying to at least position it. But who knows whether Gameworks is restricting them? Who knows? Like in some of the previous Q&A parts, we've got another rapid fire section to get through. A couple of quick questions to fire between us. So let's get into it. I'll start with the, a question for Steve. Uh, okay. Do you guys think that one should base uh, a motherboard purchase on how good the VRM of a motherboard is? Uh, no, it should be something that you look into it should be worth consideration but it's not not the main thing features value build quality yep. all that kind of stuff all right tim why do you think it takes so much time for 32 inch 1440p ips 144 plus hertz monitors to hit the market yeah i think it's just based on what panels are available from companies like you know aoptronics lg that sort of thing i think they're focused on other monitor types now this seems to be more focused on these and we should see a couple of these monitors hit the market pretty soon, potentially in the next couple of months, actually. Um, okay. Steve, how long until we have mid-range slash low-end cards, you know, 3060, 3050, and anything that would be below $300? Um, pretty typical sort of launch cycle, I would say, for what you saw with Turing, Pascal, and anything AMD does. So usually there'll be a card staggered every month after the initial sort of launch. So we're getting the 3070 next month. 3060 Ti, I think, has been rumored already. That's probably like a November. You might get the 3050 in December, but it's probably going to be more like January. But you'll just see Ampere launches yep. once a month for the foreseeable until they're all out the door, and then 
a year later we'll do some kind of refresh or something probably all right <laughs> tim what type of paper was the rtx 30 series launched on yeah i'm not sure is it more of a cardboard more of a more of a thin oh, I paper think it, oh no it'd be some sort of exotic hard to find paper wouldn't it yeah maybe some um recycled fancy trees or something yeah, yeah. <laughs> something that's in short supply yeah that's uh, for sure okay steve um will you benchmark the amd mountain bike that was released some time ago <laughs> I uh, don't have the expertise or skill to review or benchmark mountain bikes. I think I'll leave that uh, to Steve from Gamers Nexus. He seems more like the uh, mountain bike type to yep. me. He, he's into he that stuff. He bought one, didn't he? I think so, yeah, he's, yeah. I think he's going to do a review on it. Um, yeah. Yeah, so that, that should be fun. For Tim, when will we see Ryzen 4000 or Ryzen 5000 series CPUs available Q1 2021? As in, that's the question. Will it be then? Yeah, I don't think it'll be then. I think it'll be earlier if they're announcing it sort of in the next couple of weeks, actually, early October. So 2021, mm. I wouldn't wouldn't think so. I think it'll be this year for sure in the next couple of weeks or months. Um, Steve, do you think the RTX 3090 is worth buying while it's just 10 to 15% faster than the RTX 3080, which is half of its price? Did you watch my review? <laughs> I'm a little bit insulted, <laughs> uh, but <laughs> no. Uh, okay, we'll move along after that person clearly doesn't watch our reviews. Uh, is it worth it to buy 3090X slash Zen 2 right now or better to wait for announcement on 8th October? Definitely better to wait. As we were talking about sort of earlier in the Q&A, um, yeah, you should be waiting. Don't build, a, don't build a PC right now. Really bad time, in our opinion. Mm. Steve, based on your experience with previous GPU launches, when do you guys think that the RTX 3080 will be readily available to purchase? Uh, generally, it's like a month or so after, so I'd be expecting supply to pick up by the end of October. But as we've discussed a few times in our Q&A series, 2020 is a weird time. Supply for things is higher than usual because people are at home playing and all that sort of stuff. So Typically, I'd wait a month, but who knows in the in this case. So it's just not normal times. Yep. All right, Tim, are you planning on adding ultra-wide benchmarks somewhere in the future? Yeah, we talked about this before, about how we're probably not going to do much ultra-wide benchmarking. We've polled the audience in the past. Not many people use ultra-wide. And, you know, benchmarks are not necessarily a performance guide. They're more about just comparing stuff and existing resolutions already offer that. And if you are an ultra-wide gamer anyway, you could sort of go between 1440p and 4k you get a pretty good estimate so yeah mm -hmm. all right that does it for yeah the q and a's from at least the youtube questions mm. so as always we do get hundreds of questions in our little community tab asking the questions section don't know really what you call it the post there whatever yep. lots of questions we can only answer some of them we did a bit of a rapid fire stuff as well but yeah so i think that most of those were the upvoted ones the good ones will be back uh, soon with the Patreon questions from our special Patreon members. This month they asked a ton of questions in our Discord, so we oh, really, really had to be very selective with some of the questions there, which, yeah, really great questions from them as well. So that will be up on the channel uh, shortly. If you want to ask questions for next month's Q&A series and you're a Patreon member, well, yeah, go and do that in our Discord chat. And if you're not a Patreon member, now's a good time to sign up because... Yeah, you'll be in there with all those great questions as well, and we'll get to picking those, or just discussing them on the live stream, which we just did. So lots of fun stuff there. Got anything else to add at the end of the uh, YouTube, Patreon, Q&A stuff? I don't think there's anything I can add to that, Tim. You've done an excellent job this time. Mm. Yeah, that's unusual for me, so... <laughs> <laughs> no, never. You always do a great job. All right, well, that's it from Mustache Tim. Yep. <laughs> yep, all going well over here. How about you? Uh, what can we call you? Mon Are you still Monitor Steve? I'm just, I'm Monitor yeah. Steve. Okay. That, that, that's it. Everyone knows that. All right. Well, thank you very much for watching, guys. Appreciate you, especially for those of you who watched the entire video. Yep. Good MVPs. job. MVPs. Yep. And uh, yeah, of course, I am your host, Monitor Steve. I'm your host, Moustache Tim. <laughs> we'll see you in the next one. <laughs> <laughs>